Hello, everybody. Hello and hello. Welcome to stream. I don't know. Uh... <laughs> hello. Welcome to stream, everybody. Um, like the title says today, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be going over the digital dark tips that I wish I knew when I first started. Um, for information, my first digital art program was Photoshop, but I had no tutorials. I just kind of went in blind and was like, yeah, let's do this. Let's go for it. But hello. Hello. Welcome in, everyone. Hello. How am I? I'm okay. I'm really tired. You again. Yeah, I'm stuck here, Oz. I am I'm perpetually in this chair. <laughs> but hello, I hope you all are doing well. Um Let me know if music's good, let me know if my volume's good, if I need to turn myself up, turn myself down, turn the music up, turn the music down. Um actually let me check my volume real quick. Ooh, I am a little bit low. Let's turn that up a little bit. There we go. That should be fine. Music's good. Alright. I had no tutorials relatable, yeah. <laughs> turn it 
turned herself up. Yeah, 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 I turned myself up just a little bit. Um, okay, but yes, yes. Welcome in everyone. Welcome to stream. Um, before we get going, you all pretty well know what is what the uh, the the drill is by now. Because if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors. Because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges or supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they are gone all right brilliant beautiful um i made you draw split to zesty i have been listening to anarchy rainbow ever since <laughs> the direct came out okay <laughs> i have not stopped listening to it um but okay before we go Thoughts on Fry? I love Fry. I love them all. They're all such great designs. I don't care what anybody says. Um, her design isn't bad. It's just that people don't like it that much, which is fine. I love I love Fry. She's great. Um, I, I do prefer Shiver, though. <laughs> but yes, before we get going on our stream, actually, let's talk about the submissions, the Discord submissions. Woo woo. Which Splatfest team? Um, I'm gonna have to go Team Scissors. I like using scissors. But we're gonna be going over our... Actually, no, Team Rock, because that's Shiver, isn't it? I tend to use scissors, but like, Shiver. <laughs> um, we'll be going over more Discord submissions. Um, more Discord submissions for the art. First up, we have Broccoli J's character, Ramona Kanehurst. This is a beautiful illustration. Really good work with using the background as just a background, um, not letting it take over the character, blurring it. Blurring a background is a really, one of my favorite techniques is just like, yeah, I put in a background, I'll just blur it. <laughs> Don't have to worry about anything. We'll just leave it there. Um, but yeah, really, really beautiful. Great palette as well. This is gorgeous. Um, how do you find your Discord? Exclamation point Discord. So next one is the character named Bowie. Pastel Blue Lion. Pastel Blue Lion's character. This is a beautiful... I love this design. <laughs> I'm a really big fan of big pointy ears and horns and like a whip-like tail. Like this is... It's just a It's just a good design. It's just fun. Um, really great outfit too. I love the very simple color scheme very simple design overall in terms of like the outfit um the character's a little bit more complicated but i do like the i do really love the the outfit itself really really great looking character this character they said it was their bird-headed dude by iceyob iceyobi i think that's how you pronounce it i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing it wrong um Sorry, let me check, because I had, like, a detailed list as well. Yeah, so they said that this was their bird-headed character. I love object heads. Like, that's, like, a really big thing that I love. Like, my my original username online, like, right now it's television. But originally it was, like, pastel telehead, because I love, like, the television heads. I love when people take, like, weird objects or creatures and just make that the head of somebody i think that's really cool this is a really really cool design they had a secondary one which showed off the full body um but they said it was rushed so i took the less rushed one <laughs> okay next one this character is by Faye. i don't have a name for them or anything this is just a really cute character i love the braids well done on the braid drawing um this is a really good example of like a character who's like less is more a very by comparison to all the fantasy characters we've been getting we have like a more modern character really really cute um really fun hair really fun just overall design i love it really really cute really great um color usage as well your line art's really killer very loose good one this character by Giotto or Jot? Giotto? I don't. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have this name. Um, Jot as well, I suppose. Um, this is their character, Kochi or Kosi. Co 
I don't want to mispronounce anybody's name. <laughs> um, but this is a beautiful design. I adore this line work. This line work is so fun. I'm a huge fan of super chunky lines. Um, I love the color pink. I just, I really like pink. Um, but overall, this is just a really, really fun design. Really great um, geometric handling of the hair as well. And just that, that line art is killer. It's just so smooth, so clean. Very, very thick, chunky. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> All right. Oh, this one. This is this character is by Spenny. This is their character Scratch that they've had since they're ele they were eleven. Um, I still keep my characters like when I from when I was like early teens, teenagers as well. I have like a character set that I still use when I was, from when I was twelve. Um, Dude, I wish I could zoom into this one. This layout doesn't let me do that. This rendering, this line art, everything is killer, dude. Like, this is such a beautiful, beautiful design. Beautiful illustration. You have a really, really great and solid style. This is a really, really good one, dude. Keep going, man. Your anatomy is killer. This is so great. I love this. It's a good one. All right. This next one is by Mr. Grimm. A uh, very Transformer-esque character named Ranger. I'm a really big fan of- I- Transformers was my childhood, man. Like, I can't just not pick it. <laughs> the big robot. I'm a really big fan of mechs as well. Like, I'm quite bad at drawing mechs, I find. Or I'm, like, quite bad at, like, designing mechs or anything like that. This is really well done. Really, really great work on the forms on this one. Um, it's a great time. How do you find the Discord? Exclamation point Discord. If you ever want to do find anything, is exclamation point Discord. Um, but yeah, they're really, really cool. I'd love to see the transform state as well, if this is a transformer. If not, then, like, it's cool on its own as well. <laughs> but if it is, I'd love to see the transform state, too, if you're in here. This character by Galactic Firefly is their new Dragon Boy, is from one what I remember. Beautiful design. Beautiful colors. I'm a really big fan of, like, teal with, like, warmer browns and like warmer creams like it's such a beautiful palette i'm a really really huge fan of this one um gorgeous gorgeous palette really great outfit i love how simple and like elegant this entire design is really really well done i love this one and this character by dice on the discord i think his name is chiro Chiro, Chiro. I don't know how Japanese you want me to pronounce the name. Um, really fun. I love this weapon. I, I love the weasel named Boots. Big fan. Um, I'm a really, really big fan of that spear. I love weapon design. It's something I want to get better at. Um, really fun outfit. Is that I love the the larger, the smaller on top, larger on bottom, kind of uh, weighting or kind of balance where the character is very thin. They have really big baggy pants. I'm just a huge fan of that. <laughs> Um, really great stuff. Um, and just a really great palette. This is a triadic, traditional triadic. So you've got like your orange yellows in there and then like some reds and blues. Really great dog. Really great work. Really fun. I think this is the last one, if I remember correctly. Yeah, this is by M in the Discord. These wings are killer. I love chunky wings, dude. I'm such a huge fan, huge fan of chunky wings. Uh, I, I saw like the previous version of this one. Um, and this one was like the improved version. You improved so quick. This is a beautiful illustration. Um, is this live or pre-recorded? This is live. Um, but I, I love the, I love how chunky these wings are. I just love chunky wings and like the, the really cool, like digitigrade legs on top of that. And like the horns. I was like, I play a dragonborn, man. Like I, <laughs> I'm, I'm biased. Um, man, what a cool, what a cool design. Really great balance of the dark colors with the, the really bright teal in there as well. Really cool work. Sick work. All right. I think that was the last one though. So it was wonderful thank you everyone for submitting thank you for submitting your beautiful work beautiful characters um if you didn't get in this week that's totally fine you can keep on submitting week by week um if you already got in one week it's it, it's rare that i'll pick you twice um because i will remember your username um but those of you who didn't get in this week that's totally fine just keep on keep on submitting i may choose you next time um because this is a weekly thing so every week I will be choosing a different set of 10 to go through at the beginning of stream. 
Jixi will remember that pretty well. D and D, my beloved. Yeah, no, I I I play it. <laughs> I play a session this Sunday. I'm so excited. I get to play as Corn again. Um. Oh boy. Shiver Nation, rise up. Who wears my Splatoon Nation? Where are you? But all right. As the stream name suggests, we are going to be going over digital art tips that I wish I knew. All right. So we are going to be going over some of the digital art tips based on the um, poll. The poll told me that I should be going over shading tips first. So I will be doing that. I'll go over like maybe two or three things that I wish I knew when I first started shading. Um, or like just working with shadows in general. All right, how am I gonna, how am I gonna, how am I gonna format this? That's the real question. Let's see, hang on. Change canvas size. Let's just. Let's make this a 2000 by, let's just make this a very vertical file. Let's do that. Format it like my lessons. Digital. So we'll be starting off with shading and then I will be taking requests for other tips that you want me to give. I cannot give program specific tips, unfortunately, unless if it is Medibang, Photoshop, or Clip Studio. Um, I am best with Photoshop. I'm not amazing with Clip nor Medibang. I've been using Medibang longer than Clip. Um, but Clip is very similar to, um, what's it called? Clip is very similar to Photoshop regardless. So usually if I have a Photoshop tip, then it will most likely work in Clip as well. Digital tips. I, uh, uh, oh boy. I wish I... New vibes. <laughs> so for shading. Shadow color. will be the calm oh boy the calm <laughs> oh no calm blue three color of the light, right? So when you are shading in anything, your shadow color, if it is in color, your shadow color will be the complementary color of the light. Oh, on the RGB color wheel. So no, not the color wheel that you learn in school, but the color wheel that you see on your digital canvas. If you look over here, you are working with an RGB color wheel. Notice that yellow and red and blue are in off kilter places. This is because this is a completely different color wheel than what you're used to seeing. When we are working with light, light's primary colors are now red, green, and blue. Those are your new primary colors. So let's say if you have like a yellow light, kind of an orangey yellow light, your shadow color will be like a like a blue cyan kind of around there. So let's let's shade in something real quick. Let me let me put this wheel back. Oh, I forgot to make my layers. I wish you would let me work in a specific way, clip. Why can you not let me just name the layer immediately when I hit control shift new? What's your opinion on Natrix? On my personal account, I'm subscribed to her. So I do, I love Natrix. So let's say, chat, pick a color for me. 
Blue, purple, teal, pink, purple, cyan, purple. I'm seeing a lot of blues and purples and pinks. All right. I'm starting to see a lot more purples. I think I'm going to go with purple. I'm not making a poll because this is going to take too long if I make a poll. <laughs> I'll go with purple, though. It's just to fill in this circle. It's not it's not for the shadow color or anything. It's just to fill in the circle. But okay. Purple. I needed a light purple so it wouldn't like interfere. So, let's say we've got our colored our, our sphere. I call it the color sphere. Let's move this over. Normally, I'd make it a skin sphere, but I'm like, like, or the flesh cube, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, so let's say we wanted to create a. Where is my clipping? There it is. Let's say I wanted to create like a shadow on here, right? Stop. Let me change the name. So let's say I wanted to create my shadow. My shadow. I'm gonna make. Or actually, let's do my light first. Let's say I wanted to make my light kind of a yellowish color. Let's say I wanted to make my shadow this color. Or my light this color. I would change my my um, my layer type to soft light. You can use hard light if you so choose. It really does not matter. It's just whatever effect you want later on. But let's say that I'm choosing this for my light color. So my light color is a yellow. So let's say that I've got a yellow for this. What I'm going to do, based off of the color that I've chosen here, I'm going to go across my color wheel. Every digital artist will have the same color wheel. I'm going to go across, find this color. This will now be the color of my shadow. And that's the realistic shadow that I would pick with a multiply layer. Right? A color bar, you can change it. So if you have a bar, well, a bar regardless, if you look at like a, you can change your color wheel usually. You can change it to a color wheel. Like over here, I can change this to a cube cube, I think. Like, I could change this to, like, that. I could change this to... Where is my hue? Can I not change this to hue? I know I can. Come on now. Yeah, some people have the hue cube. I have this on Photoshop, so I've got a bar and a hue cube. Um, the main things you want to know, though, are that your primary colors are red, green, and blue. Your secondary colors are yellow, magenta, and cyan. That's for your RGB color wheel. Even then, you can look up a color wheel. It's a beautiful thing called Google. Right? I can do this with other colors. Let's let's create a new sphere. Chat, pick another color for me. Seeing a lot more green this time around. Let's go with green. That's very mint like. I like that they call it luminosity. Very professional. Let's go with this green, then. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, so true. 
Luminosity. Luminosity. Um. So let's take this green for a second. Oh my gosh, it's already 421. Wait, hang on. <laughs> Can I not merge these two? Merge selected, thank you. And then... Thank you. So let's say this time my light was cold. Let's say that I had a teal, kind of a light teal for my, my color here. Whoa. Let's say that I had a light teal for my highlight now. Let's turn this to a... Oh, I'm on the wrong layer, that's fine. Let's go on this one. Let's say my light color was cold this time, right? I had a nice bright teal for my light color this time. Again, go across. And this would be my shadow color. <laughs> and that's a good way for you to kind of check to see that your shadow colors are correct. That's like the main thing that I wish I knew. That's like this. And this was like a yellow like here. This is like a blue. Why do I sound so familiar? Good question, not sure. To understand how people use RGB sliders to choose colors, it's called memorizing the color wheel, Oz. I'm joking. This <laughs> okay, let's merge these. Can I not merge down? No? Okay. Let's just merge these then. I'm just gonna put them all in one layer. I'm too lazy. Okay. Okay, I do. Hmm. Okay, let me give one more tip about shading and then we can move on to you guys. giving me suggestions or asking. So let me just do one more tip and then we can move on. So number two, the second shading tip that I wish I do, set shadows look best. Or I guess here, hang on. Rendering is a blend of soft and so shading. Not one or the other. How we can master doing anatomy without reference? Figure out the forms that you are looking at and memorize them. I wish I had a better one for you, but that's it. So realistic rendering is a blend of soft and cell shading, not one or the other. A lot of people will, me will mess this up. They'll go like, oh, realistic rendering is all soft shading, not necessarily true. So usually it's better if you have a blend of the two and it makes things look a lot better. All right, let's say I had like, I'm trying to think of something I can do pretty fast. I could probably do two objects fast. Let's do that. So let's say that I had like one cylinder here. And then if I had another cylinder here. This is not going to be perfect because I am rushing. <laughs> so do not mind me. But let's say that I've got like, whoopsie doopsie. Let's say that I've got like my light co source coming from up top here. 
Let's say that. Beautiful. That makes my life easier. So let's say that we had this, right? Our general shadows, right? Because it's coming from up here. We have a shadow going here because it's overlapping with this one. We have another shadow curving around here on this cylinder. And there's also more shadow on the back of this cylinder. Also got shadow on this side. And this shadow would be kind of like that. The level of shadow would be more like that over here, right? So with this cylinder, right, it's rounded. So we're going to soft shade this one in. It'd be like the core shadow kind of right here. Maybe a little bit of bounce down here. So it's not perfectly black all the way around. But because this shadow is immediately hitting this cylinder right here, my shadow remains very, very sharp. This edge will remain completely sharp. And as it gets further away, that's when it starts to become softer. As it hits this edge immediately, it remains completely sharp. But as it gets further away, it stops being quite as sharp. Hello, welcome in. So notice how much nicer that looks, right? If I was to make all of this completely soft, right? I can do that, but it looks a lot more hefty, a lot more realistic when we have a section that is sharp and cell shaded, and then it fades into a soft shade. So usually a more realistic shading method uses a blend of the two by comparison to one or the other. Even the cast shadow, right, back here, even the cast shadow down here, right, as it starts underneath here, it'll be nice and sharp as it is immediately hitting the object. And as it gets farther away, it'll start becoming a lot softer. But soft shading or realistic blending does not necessarily mean everything has to be soft. You don't pick one or the other, you use both. It looks a lot nicer when you use both. That doesn't look perfect because it's rushed, but don't worry about it. <laughs> Just trust me. <laughs> So those are my two tips on shading. Chat, what digital art tips would you like me to give? Some sort of scattering. What program are you using? This is Clip Studio. Skin tone shading. Lines. I'm seeing a lot of line art. Colors. Coloring skin, sketching. I'm seeing a lot of line art. Keep the flow of the sketch into line art. Okay. I can do line art. Let's do line art. We are doing digital art tips. So general things like... Um, I can do, I could do sketching, but general things like anatomy, I can't really relate that to digital. That could be done both traditionally and digitally.
Ever played Mad Rat Dead? I've never heard of it. I can definitely talk about texture, if there's enough demand. How do I color hair? I can go over that later if you so choose. For these ones where we are going over chat requests, I'm going to be doing one tip at a time from now on. So for Lionheart, I'll give like my top tip that I think is important. And then we can do another one after that. I need to change my canvas size again. Let's just whoop. There we go. What tablet do I use? Exclamation point device. So line art. Right, line art. Use your stabilization and smoothing. Within all digital programs, you have some kind of... On my headphones are those cow or goat ears. There are cow ears. I have cow ears on my headphones. I prefer thick line art. Um, but use your stabilization or smoothing. Every program has it. Every program has some kind of stabilization or smoothing. Or, yeah, so over here on, on uh, Clip Studio, we have stabilization. Um, on Photoshop, it's called smoothing. Um... Oh, and then on Medibank, it's called Correction, I believe. It's called, but it has a bunch of different names. Um, but what it does is it slows down your brush so that it has a bit of a lag to it, right? So without stabilization, my brush moves immediately. Without stabilization, my brush does not move immediately. It has a little bit of a lag to it, right? So it smooths out. So again, if I try to straight line, no stabilization, straight line with stabilization nope let's turn that up more <laughs> with stabilization right you can see the slight bit of lag that happens with it use your stabilization and smoothing as much as possible but don't rely on it that's my biggest tip it's like these are these are tips on tutorials <laughs> um constantly change my smoothing based on what bit of line art i'm doing because it causes my brain to lag felt um but you should practice without your smoothing and stabilization as well. I think it's better to, you know, not rely on it. I like it's it's good to have it and I use it all the time, but I think that by relying on your smoothing too much, you lose you focus too hard on the perfection and you lose your gesture, you lose your movement. So like especially if you're working with like a character that has a lot of action, if you try and keep your smoothing as high as possible, it'll end up making the action kind of lose, lose its fortitude. All right, so let me let me sketch in something really quick. I'll read chat while I do so. so used to doing line art without it that when you did it with it it hurt your brain yeah when i first started using stabilization i was like i hate stabilization now i've gotten used to it because i do a lot of like i do a lot of like very meticulous line art now but especially if you're doing some kind of like intense action it's actually don't like my line art when it's scribbled yeah or when it's like stabilized for scribbly i think that like 
I love really meticulous line art. I also love really messy line art. Um, in order to do proper messy line work, though, you need to know how to do clean line work, I think. It's like you should be able to know how to do both. So then you can know what intentional mess looks like versus unintentional mess. This is like a really cartoon network -y. This is my chibi style. This is how I work quick. So let's say that I've got this character here. Can I do this? I cannot. Can I? See, I can't just hold control and alt. And then have it give me like what I want. So let's say that I kept my smoothing on really high for this one. A lot of people like to keep their sta or st stabilization. A lot of people like to keep their stabilization really high. Right? Let's say that I did that. Let's say that I kept my stabilization really high and I moved really slow for this line art. Really nice and clean. Because a lot of people, some people really love really smooth, slow line work, which is totally fine. I too love slowing down my line work sometimes. Especially if I'm doing like really big comic pages. I did one recently and I was really, I really loved it. It was so fun. Lord, you are fast. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing, like I find that everybody as they're growing up as an artist, they have one thing that they focus on to get better at constantly. Um, for me, it was speed. Like, the, the unorthodox thing I decided to focus on was speed. So, like, for growing up, as when I was learning to draw, I focus on everything, but the number one thing I focused on was speed. I was like, I need to be fast. Because I had it drilled into me. I'm like, if you're going to go in the industry, you need to be fast. And I was like, okay. And I took that to heart. <laughs> Love my style. Thank you. This is, like, my chibi style. This is how I draw when I need to go fast. I have a couple of speedy styles. This one is one of my faster ones. Right? So this one is nice and slowed down with the stabilization. Right? It's nice. It's smooth. It's really, really great. Right? But it kind of, it slightly loses the action. Right? It makes it a bit too clean. Without the stabilization, I can really get in there. And mess around and make this feel... It has a bit of a different movement to it when I have to move quick. Because in order to make your lines feel smooth without stabilization, you have to move fast. If you want smooth lines without stabilization, you need to move fast. The faster you move, the smoother your lines will become. And with the urgency of the pose comes the urgency of the line art. And you feel that energy through it. When your line art is done slow, you'll be able to see it. You'll be able to feel that slowness through it. When your line art is done faster, you'll be able to feel that speed. Right? So it usually is a lot nicer when you work without it. For faster, more urgent poses. There was a pose I had to do. Hang on. This is a really quick example. Let me give it a more, I guess, quote unquote, slowed example where I had to work on a more intense pose. Shh. 
Let's take a slowed down page versus a quicker page. Okay, so this page, right? I had to do a, a seven page comic, um, seven, eight page comic um, within five days, total of 15 hours. I'm doing lighter for the first time in months. It hurts, but it's fun, valid. Welcome in, Kay. Right? So a nice and slowed down page, all of these lines were done with stabilization on. So I needed to keep it nice and smooth right wanted to keep it nice and stationary keep it all nice and you know clean right but once i got to my action poses i turned my stabilization off and started making my lines feel more urgent added some mess in there made it a bit more you know i had to do it to him Made the lines feel more urgent. Made them have no stabilization at all. Made it as, like, you know... As intense and, like, messy as I could. Right? To make it, you know, feel more urgent. So I think it's great to add stabilization. Stabilization is a great tool. Use it as much as you can. Use it as much as you want. But don't rely on it. Because sometimes when you stick to just one kind of line art for everything, that it, like, you know... It makes everything a bit too stiff. So experiment with no stabilization. Experiment with non-clean line work. Experiment by changing your style. Use lines to your advantage. What's he got on his back? It's a, it's a rat pelt. Oh, whoops. What's well, something you love to draw, but you're kind of upset because I have to draw it? Um, that's a weird question. I don't know. I've, I've never had to... If I love to draw it and I also have to draw it, I'm never like... <laughs> I'm never like, man, I hate this because I have to do it. I just I just do it. I'm, I'm happy about it. <laughs> Vehicles I hate to draw, period. That's not, a, that's not a thing, Marlene. It's like, a, it's not like, a, oh, I love to draw it, but I hate to draw it because I have to draw it. No, no, no. I just hate drawing vehicles. What is the tip that changed my art? Learn realism. Line art wait? Oh, I can talk about that. Y'all want line waiting? Yeah, what is the tip that changed my art? Learn realism and memorize it. <laughs> learn my anatomy and learn my scientific terms. Yeah, please. Line art, line waiting. Line waiting? Cool. I can do that, yeah. I can do backgrounds afterwards. I'm seeing a bunch of people ask for backgrounds. So I'll do line waiting first and then I can go to backgrounds after this. Learning realism ruined my cartoony style. I feel like there's a difference between learning realism and becoming a realist artist. Like people, when they say like, oh, I learned realism and now it's ruined my cartoony style. No, 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 it's actually improved it. If you learn realism correctly, then you'll improve upon your cartooning style. I can draw hyper-realistically any second that I want, right? That doesn't mean that my style has suffered. Very true, Evie likes to draw. I think you should learn cartoons and realism at the same time. They should work in tandem with each other. It's very true. Does it have to be hyper-realistic? No, never.
Learn to control your wrist for line weighting. If you have to press too hard for a thicker line, change your pressure sensitivity settings. Right? Thicker lines. Make all illustrations. CSP is funky. Even though I've turned off my like my my stabilization isn't on at all, it still feels like it's on, which is funky. All right, so learn to control your wrist for line weighting. If you have to press too hard for a thicker line, change your pressure sensitivity settings. I see a lot of people where they're like, oh, I have to press super hard for really thick lines. Like, I, I never do it. And I'm like, then maybe you should change how your brush works. <laughs> right? Thicker lines, a lot, thicker lines around a silhouette make all illustrations better. How realistic do you need to learn? The basics. What microphone do I use? I have no clue. <laughs> it's a th it's a Thron Max something? I don't know. My dad gave it to me. He was like, hey, I have a leftover mic you want. And I'm like, sure. So, <laughs> so learn to control your wrist. Learn to control when you should press lighter, how to press harder. Get a feel for your pen, right? Do really, really smooth. Right? Eventually you gotta learn like How do I put this? Usually it's you have to understand how your pen works. You need to know how to press at the right times, how to press not at the right times, right? It is very much practice. Like I can't give you any other tips other than like you gotta practice with your own pen. Right, learn to control your wrist for line weighting, especially with line weighting. It, it goes in tandem with like you gotta move faster, right? The quicker you work, the easier it is to um, focus on your line weighting rather than um, making it smooth, right? I naturally press hard, so I typically have to do smaller brush sizes. Yeah. You probably shouldn't, um, what's it called? You probably shouldn't press too hard that one art channel. It'll, it'll ruin your wrist in the future. Use your finger. Woof. Will this live go down afterwards? Yeah, yeah, it'll be on the channel for you to watch afterwards. Where could I add thicker lines? Thicker line work is usually around, like, um... Thicker lines around a silhouette, right? The silhouette of your illustration, the silhouette of your character. That also works. Um, there's a line art hierarchy. I'm not writing this down because this isn't a digital tip. Um, but, like, remember, guys, this is a digital art tip thing. So, like, if it just pertains to all drawing, I'll just say it. Um, but thicker line work should be... There's a line art hierarchy, usually, when you're illustrating anything. So usually it's um, it starts with the overall silhouette. That should be your thickest lines. Second thickest lines are, like, separating major portions of your character. So, like, if you separate the entire section, like, your whole head with the hair. Um, if you have, like, a shirt, like the shirt hems from the hands or the arms, um, the hems of the pants, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the third thickest lines, so you're basically your thinnest lines are like extra details like clothing folds buttons um eyelashes wrinkles that sort of thing and then what's it called and then something that like people argue back and forth about like um doing line art for like you could like it's patterning like if you have like checkered patterning or like if there's like a like, if you're drawing, like, knit, knit patterning. Some people say, like, you, like, I usually say, like, don't line that at all. Rely on that for color. Like, let your color speak for that. Don't line it at all. Um, but you could also do that with, like, really, really thin line art. If you're only working with line art. Oh, my line thickness is the same. You can have all of your line thickness the same. Here, let me, that's another, that's actually another tip. Let's do that. Let's write that down, too. Line. We 
plating isn't essential. What you do... Do come up... With a solution... from one another. All right, so line weighting isn't essential, but you do need to come up with a, situ a solution to differentiate your lines from one another. This is usually done. With colored... Colored lines. Right? So, line weighting isn't essential. You don't necessarily have to have a lot of line weight with your, um, what's it called? You don't have to have a lot of line weight with your, uh, illustrations. But if you don't have a lot of line weight, then you need to figure out a different solution for differentiating the liner from one another. Because when they're all the exact same weighting, um, that liner will compete with itself, right? If you have the exact same weighting for, like, a button on the shirt, um and like the entire like face it's gonna feel really really busy so what you have to do usually is if you lock that layer if you alpha lock or transparency lock that layer and then color those lines in a different color it'll help change the visual weighting oh ocs it stands for original character that's all that means or is there tablet talk in the chat right now sorry i've been writing That's what the alpha lock is for. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So if you have an alpha lock or transparency lock, I'll lock this layer right now. I've locked it, so now I can't color outside the lines. Right, so what an alpha lock is, this is, it says lock current transparent pixels on here, right? Um, on other programs, it's, it's protect alpha or lock alpha pixels, right? If you don't know what an alpha is, within game art and texturing, an alpha is like a transparent pixel. Your alphas are transparent textures. Um... So anything that is transparent is considered an alpha. So when you have your, when they say lock alpha transparency or lock your alpha pixels, it means that you cannot draw on the alpha. You cannot draw on your transparent pixels. So all that you can draw on are the things that are not alphas, which is everything that has already been drawn in. So that's what that means. You've been doing that manually? I'm so sorry. My first tablet was like 30 bucks and I use that forever. We actually have a video coming up on um, tablets for beginners. And then we're going to have a tablet for um, advanced people later on. That one's an on-cam video. So you will see my face. I'm editing that one. So it'll come to you when I'm done editing that. <laughs> Alpha lock is like a clipping mask, but there's no layer on top, right? Yes. So because a clipping mask is it clips to the non-alpha pixels. Um, but your know, alpha lock has less, uh, it's, it's less forgiving, <laughs> basically, because it's not a separate layer. All right. How do you pick what brush to use? Everybody has a different brush set. So with me, I have my own set of brushes that I like to use, right? This like little folder in Clip Studio is Jesse's brush pack um, or Jesse's brush set. It's what I use on Photoshop as well. So you need to like, you basically just need to find a brush set that works for you. Not everybody's brushes work for everybody, right? Mine are a mix of like brushes that I made or like Kyle brushes or brushes that I paid for. Brush choice is a spiritual decision, basically. Beginner tablet one will be on this channel so I can share it. Yes. 
how many OCs people usually have? Hundreds. <laughs> um, but yes. All right. That's about it for line art. Chat, what would you like me to talk about next? Oh, wait, backgrounds. <laughs> That's right, y'all wanted me to do a background one. <laughs> Yes, that's right. You guys wanted me to do background snacks. I can do that. Give me a second while I take a sip of water. Also, my apologies if I seem really scatterbrained. It's because I am. <laughs> Alright, backgrounds. Again, these will be in relation to digital drawings of backgrounds. It won't actually be for just backgrounds in general. Why can't I, like, just hold shift and draw straight across? Like, that's the one failure of clip, I think. It's just like, please, just let me draw perfectly vertical. Stuck in D&D? &D? No, I've taught two other classes before this. Um, I'm running on maybe five hours of sleep. It's just, I'm very scatterbrained right now. <laughs> My apologies. Um. But yes, I'm still here. I hate it. You can't just drag to draw a straight line with pressure, right? Why don't I use a hue saturation one? Like the the hue cube? I usually use that on uh, on Photoshop, but like the color wheel is nice for people who want to visually see a color wheel. The click to draw line is always at 100% thickness. Yeah, yeah. Backgrounds. Backgrounds. Don't let your background overtake the character if it's not the focus. That's the number one thing that I see all the time is that people were like, will be like, oh, I need to draw a background, but my background feels really hot. Or like they'll draw in the background and it'll be like crazy busy. It'll be like super, super filled with a bajillion things, right? But it's not the focus. And then it takes away from the character that you're drawing, right? Don't let your background overtake your character if it's not the focus. Three strats. No worries. Thanks for joining. Um, Three strats that I usually use, right, are to use less detail overall, right? Just forfeit the detail. Sometimes it's better just not to add in enough detail at all. Blur it. If you draw in something, blur the background so it fades away from the character. Or have no background at all. Just don't put in a background <laughs> if you don't want it to overtake a character. Um, but if you have, you know, a background where, you know, there's a character in front and you don't want the background to be any kind of focus... Right? If you don't want it to be the main, main focus of what the composition is, then either use less detail or blur it. Right? You really, really don't need... I mean, let me pull up a comic page I did recently. Right? If it's not the main focus of anything, you really don't have to make it super, super detailed. Alright? Any kind of background that you do, this is a comic page I did recently, this is my D&D &D campaign that I'm part of, right? There's backgrounds in a good chunk of these pages, right? They're blurred. There's no detail on them. You can tell that it's a background, you can tell the setting, you can see what's happening, but you literally don't, like, it's not the forefront. 
right? It's It shouldn't be the forefront because it's going to take away from the characters if you, you know, it's going to take away from the characters if the background is way too detailed, way too, way too in there. Yeah, corn. There's corn. There's my son. I drew him really cute in this, in these panels. <laughs> this is corn's canon outfit, if you're wondering. Right? So you got to make sure that you have your background did not take over the main character focus. If the background is meant to be in focus, then you can have it have detail, right? Let's pull up a different D&D character of mine. <laughs> Let's see here. Right? Let's say that you do want the background to be in focus, right? With this one, it's not meant to be like super in focus, but it is still a focus and you can still kind of see it. Why can I not, can I not control? Like how zoomed. Do I need to go to the navigator? Is that it? Yeah, probably. There we go. Right? So the background isn't super out of focus. It's not super in focus, but it doesn't take away from the main character in the front. Is that our man Kingsley? Yeah, it is. That's my boy. Um, so if the background is there, you want it to have some kind of attention, then you don't have to blur it. You still should have more focus on your main point, right? Your eyes should lead to the main point of focus first. But at that point, if the background is part of the illustration, you want the individual, you want the people to pay attention to it, then you should add more detail to it after that. Alt space to drag zoom. Why? <laughs> Why can I not just hit Z and then just like... <laughs> Love this piece. Thank you. Yes, Kingsley and Sunny is another form of Sunny. <laughs> Cause Sunny has a no like no limit to how many forms. How do you bring your background and character together? I've seen it done through lighting, but how? Lighting. <laughs> That's it. Should we use line art for backgrounds? Depends. Sometimes you can, sometimes you don't have to. If you want it to be part of the forefront, then yes, you should. Oh, I can also use the scroll wheel. Nice. If you want it to be part of like the forefront, want it to be like let me let me reopen those other comic pages. Hello. I have so many folders, so I have to search every single time that I have to pull up a specific thing. <laughs> Don't mind me. Right? You can use line art. Like, if you would like to put, like, say you have an establishing shot, you have a full background where you want, like, everything to be, like, super, super focused on, right? You can use line art for your backgrounds, right? If you don't, then don't. Don't use any line art for your backgrounds. Have it fade into the background. Just use colors only. And it'll fade nice and easily away and not take away from your character. Use less detail, blur it, or no background at all. Right? Don't let your background overtake your character if it's not the focus. How about depth? Depth is done. Um, with your foreground, middle ground, and background. I just taught this. Let me pull out the lesson. So I just taught on composition because I'm not going to rewrite it. Uh, mentorship. There we are. Right? How you add depth is you understand your background, your middle ground, and your foreground. This is from my art mentorship class, exclamation point classes, if you'd like to check out the classes that we offer. Um, your background, your mid ground, and your foreground are the three planes that you usually have on any kind of background. Um, but if you would like to add depth, the more blur that you add, that's called your focal focal length um, within cameras. Say if you have like something coming closer to you, something that's a little bit farther away, if you add a blur to it, this is another one of our party members. His name is Scribbles. Um, if you have if you have a blur, right, you can tell that these kind of, like, tree leaves right here- Whoopsie daisy, what happened here? How'd I do that? If you have- Sorry, my brain just stopped working for a second. Right, you can tell that these tree leaves are directly in the front, right? Because they're nice and blurred, they're kind of covering the camera, shows a bit of a short focal length, right? Just you being the art teacher for summer break, I don't get a break when I teach, I teach you around. Right? Same deal with here. If you want depth with something, this is another one of my characters. This is Rai. So if you have like a something that's coming closer towards you, you can blur it. 
All right, the thing that is in focus will be nice and sharp. Very easy to see, Scooby Boos. But the thing that comes closer to you will be a lot blurrier. Scrunched up his whiskers. Yeah, yeah, he's got scrunched up whiskers. I love scribbles. He talks with like a like a stereotypical New York accent. The voice that the player wanted for him was like meowth. <laughs> My head was because. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can add depth by just blurring, change the focal length. Um, what's really fun about illustration with digital illustration and just illustration in general is that you will take advice from other forms of digital media. In this case, with like adding depth, you will take adv advice from photographers and cinematographers. Um, changing the focal length of what it is that you're illustrating, changing the, you know, there's, there's a lot that you can do. The focal length is the main thing though. Like a short focal length, you'll have more areas that are blurred. Do I offer private mentorships? Yes, exclamation point classes. You can book, you can book time with me. I'm not available anytime soon, <laughs> but um, yes, I do do private mentorships. We, we do, do, we do offer one-on-ones. You can check it out on the website, waynecanvas.com. Is that another black cat? Yes, his name is Squibbles. Been meaning to learn more photography. I took one small filmography class. It taught so much about composition. Absolutely, yeah. Film and cinematography teaches you so much about it. I have a photographer for a father, so I grew up around like cameras and lighting and all that fun stuff. All right. I didn't write any of that down because that's backgrounds in general. Anybody have any specific digital tips for backgrounds that they want? They're a very good cat, yes. Sorry, teacher, I'm late. I had to make my coffee, Felt. Light versus dark backgrounds, perspectives, furniture. Props, texture density. Hmm, okay. A lot of those kind of leads to texture, so let's do let's do this. can be a swipe or the brush. Right? So plants, props, and the like can be done with a lot less detail than you'd think. A lot of people really struggle with, like, plants, grass, trees, that kind of thing. Right? Plants, props, that sort of thing, and the like can be done with a lot less detail than you'd think. Right? A lot of people end up, like, especially with, like, bushes or, like, trees. They'll end up trying to draw a bunch of little leaves all the time, a bunch of little grass, like, bits, so on and so forth. Right? Plants can just be a swipe of the brush. It can just be like a little, little tick, right? Chairs can be like five lines put together. They don't even need to be like rendered out like crazy, right? If it is not the focal point, don't focus on it. If it is not your focus po focal point, don't focus on it. <clears throat> Definitely show a demonstration. I'm going to in a second. Um, if it's not a focal point, don't focus on it, right? Stay zoomed out. If you're working on a background, 
don't zoom in constantly. If you zoom in all the time, it is going to make you focus in on places that you don't need to focus on. It's gonna make you worry about detail that you don't need to worry about, right? Stay as zoomed out as possible, right? If you don't, if you like try and zoom in all the time, it's gonna, it's gonna slow you down and it's gonna make things way too overly detailed. Um, I did a piece like very, very recently. Hang on. Oh, I'm currently working on a thing. It's just my commission sheet. Load, please. Thank you. Right? Trees? Little information. Very, very small amount of information. Zoomed out, you can tell it's kind of a foggy day in a forest. Right? You're kind of looking up at some grass. You know, whatever. Right? Zoomed in, it's like three brush strokes. There's no, there's no detail here. It's all just, it's, it's a, it's an illusion. It's false, right? This is still sunny, by the way. This is still sunny in Kingsley. Sunny can just turn into like anything. Um, yeah, exactly. Most people look at their um, phones at four inches anyhow. So that's where I chose to get from detailing. Do I have a Twitter? Yeah, it's um, T-E-L-I-I. -I. Television. That's my, that's my, uh, all my social media handles. T-E-L-I-I vision. right stay zoomed out i did this whole background with like this zoom length i didn't change anything <laughs> i did not do anything extra right these leaves at the front you can tell that they're front you can tell that they're leaves you can tell that these are grass blades it's a single line There's nothing different about it right i didn't spend forever on it it works just fine what does this do oh i didn't mean to do that oh i'm sorry i'm sorry i didn't mean to do that no, stop. Don't open another window, please. <laughs> right? Even with this one. You can tell this is the grass. There's just tiny little ticks for grass. You can tell that it's grass. You can tell that he's lying in a forest. You can tell this is a bush. Alright? There's just a little bit of texture rendering, right? You really don't need that much detail for a background. You, it's called an illusion of detail. Right? Where is my where's my builder? Does the builder work here? It does. Not amazing, but it does. Oh, yeah, no, never mind. The builder does not like CSP. That's right, I forgot. Um, let's change that. Let's say if I was trying to draw like a bush. Right? Let's say if I was drawing a bush on all of Got a bush shape going on here. Let's say this bush is far in the background. I don't even need to worry about it. But I start to render it more and more. I'm like, oh, I need to make sure that every little leaf is kind of showing up. Right? As I bring more and more things into the forefront. And I started with that blob, but now I want to add more things onto it. It's like, now I want to add on little individual leaves. And let's keep going. Let's, if I just keep on adding more and more leaves, make this texture even more dense. And then I'm like, oh man, this doesn't look like a perfect leaf. Let me let me zoom in more and let me try and like make every single leaf like a perfect leaf shape. And then I go in and I'm like, no, wait, I want to like add in the texture of each leaf as well. Right? And I go in and I start like doing like, don't do this. Right? This is too much detail. If this is the thing that is in the background, this is too much detail. It's 10 15 a.m. for it's 10 15 p.m. or a.m. It's three, it's 5 15 p.m. for me. If you're in a forest and you have to do a bajillion of these guys, it looks good. Yes, it does. But if you have to do a bajillion of these guys, it's in your background, you're gonna take forever. <laughs> and it's also gonna be too much texture density. If you wanna a nice bush that's in the background that just you won't have to worry about ever 
you just draw in the general shape. Draw in maybe like a bit of highlight, a bit more highlight if you really want to. That's it. That's all you need. That's enough information. You need nothing more. You can get the point across with less. Don't burn yourself out just because you're trying to be a perfectionist. What if the area is a focus and not a character? Then you'd want to do something like this. <laughs> um, then you'd want to do something like this and I cannot help you. But if the character is a focus, then you can do that. But if the area is super expansive, let's say if you're doing a huge background piece and there's like a bajillion things around, like it's a huge zoom out, you still don't need to do this. Unless if you're really zoomed in on that bush or that bush is your main focal point, then like you don't need to zoom in that much. Like you don't need this much detail. Unless if you're zoomed in on that bush, this is still fine. Even if your background is the focus, right? There's an artist that I really, really love. Her name is Nadia Kim. She's a really, really, she's really good. Nadia Kim, not your Fox. I'm just going to show her on stream. She's like, like, an, she's an amazing artist. She does a really, really good, um, like background art, right? Let me, let me show off this one real quick. So she does a really, really good job of like, the background is the focal point. The background is the focal point. There's a couple of characters here that you see first, but look at all these leaves. It's a single swipe of the brush. All of these in the background, it's a single swipe of the brush. Same with these grass, right? These leaves are directly in the front, so they have a lot of detail, right? But as it goes farther back here, less and less becomes clear, right? I could tell Michelle, like, I love Nadia. She's so good. Um, but like it becomes less and less dense and becomes less and less detailed as you go farther into the background. The less in your face it is, the less you need to worry about it. All right. Let's move on from backgrounds. Anybody have any specific tips they'd like me to give? Your girl looks like exactly like mine, yeah. Metal shine. Ooh, that's a quick one. I can do that really quick. Metal rendering. I can do hair afterwards. Yeah. Hair texturing and fur. Shading tips was the beginning. Yeah, I can do metal really quick and then I can go into hair and fur. weather on the backgrounds like weather as in sky weather or weather as in like weathering yeah no spamming kid i'm already doing fur you don't have to keep spamming it <laughs> rain ah like rain yeah i've done rain before i usually just do like a i blur it so it's like i have the ones that are closer to you blurred and then like as it goes farther down. So metal. We're gonna do metal, and then we're gonna have um, hair and fur. I'm gonna lump those two together. So metal. Shinier it is. The less you'll blend.
And gold is warm. I'm just going to throw that in there. Right? So let's render some gold for a second. So I, just so I can kind of lump those two together. So let's say I had like a gold ball. It's nice and shiny. Right? Let's say if we started with a... Oh, actually, let's start with a non-shiny one. Let's start with a... Where are you? There you are. Let's start with a... Like a kind of a dull gold ball. Let's start with a dull gold ball. So let's say we were wanted to shade this really nice. It's gold, but it's a little dull. So it's not going to be as... It's still going to be, you know, very reflective because it's a metal. Right? It's going to be pretty reflective. But it's not going to be as reflective... as if it was super shiny, right? So there is still going to be some blending in these shadows, right? Gold shadows, if you're coloring in any kind of gold, these shadows are going to be intensely warm. It's going to be very warm by comparison to a dull. So make sure that you are hue shifting while you are choosing your uh, shadow colors. And let's say that there's like the sky below us. So it's going to be a little bit more. It's going to be some... Oops. It's going to be some bounce light down here. Yeah, but let's say that this metal is kind of dull, so it's going to be blended in a little bit more. But if not, if this is a really, really shiny gold, it's going to be blended in a lot less. I'll show you an example on some armor I've done before. There's still going to be like a minor bit of blending, but it's going to be like very, very small amounts. This actually should be lighter. This one is like... Don't mind me as I try and figure this out a little bit more. <laughs> Alright, so it's going to be a little bit shinier. That isn't amazing, but let me just show you a different one where I did do okay. <laughs> Anything that is shinier, this includes metal, jewelry, like um, glass, eyes, like anything that's wet or shiny. This, um, this shading technique holds true. It's exactly the same. Um, this shading advice works exactly the same for everything that is not, like, you know. For everything that is shiny, it'll hold the exact same feeling. Where was the last time that I did gold successfully? Was it on Cliff? I think it was on Cliff. Let's let's go look at let's go look at my paladin for a second. We get to look at Cliff again. My there we go, my paladin. So if you kind of notice, right, everywhere that is nice and shiny, these shading techniques again zoomed out looks very very shiny. Zoom in, very little has been done here. All right. So you notice how concentrated these shadows are by comparison to the green areas where are a little bit dull, a little bit more dull, right? So it's a little bit more blended there, but the edges that have gold, right? These are a lot more sharp. Oh, there's an illustration with Grayson as well that has gold in it, doesn't, isn't there? Let me see. Cliff is back. Yeah, we get to see, uh, we get to see my reindeer character, my reindeer satyr. Um... 
Metal is super fun, yeah. There's a more finished piece as well. This is a concept piece, but there should be a more finished one around here. Here we go. This one's also got some gold in it, right? You can see the shinier bits from farther away. It really is not rendered in, right? It's nice and sharp. Nice and sharp. This is entire. This entire piece is very, very cell shaded, but you notice how like layered the gold sections are, right? Very layered, very sharp. Not a lot of blending going on in there, right? The highlight intensity is very, very bright. The low light intensity is very bright, right? The bounce light is very obvious. Where I got my square painting brushes, uh, I made mine. There is one that's really nice. Um, not compatible with every program, though. It's um, Kyle's Builder Brush. It's free. Um, CSP users, it doesn't work very nice. I have no clue how it works on Procreate, but Photoshop users, it's perfect. Um, but I made mine. Um, I don't... I made my normal one, the one that I'm using right now. Which I, I can't draw on right now. This one that I'm using right now is my... I made this one. It works good on your CSP, does it? My clip does not like Kyle's Builder. <laughs> I have no clue why it does not like using this brush. I have no clue how to an Ibis. I'm sorry, Angel. I don't use Ibis. Can I post it sometime, though? I can try and post that brush individually. I unfortunately cannot give away my normal brush set. Um, because it is... I paid for some of them, and some of them I'm just not allowed to redistribute. Using it for line art? Really? Oh, you're trying the... Really? The builder works nice in yours? Interesting. Does it work on Mighty Bang? No, I'm sorry. Mighty Bang's brushes are really proprietary. You can't download it from anywhere from Mighty Bang. Beard. Yeah. Cliff is like... Cliff and then one of our party members, Lunin, or how I get practice with beards. <laughs> Hang on, where's Lunin? I want to show off Lunin. I just, we're taking a break to, for me to talk about D&D. <laughs> Where is he? Where is where's our falcon falcon grandpa? Oh, there we go. Lunin. Lunin's another character that I get practice with for beards. I never used to draw beards when I was younger, and then I got older, and now like everybody has every man that I draw has facial hair. <laughs> Kingsley's got a little scruff on his chin as well. Pierce is another character with a little bit of scruff that I get my, my practice off of as well. He's sharp. Yeah, I did a little series with all of our characters. I drew them in fashion. Like, like, a. Uh... Here, let me just open all of them. Here, I'll just find everybody. I drew our whole party in, like, fancy outfits. Load, please! There you go. So yeah, there's Lunin, and then... No. no stop. Can I... Can I turn this off, please? There we go. <laughs> I have no clue what that button was. I was like, wait, what did I press? And there's Lunin, there's Pierce, there's Squibbles, Scribbles, um, and then Atros, and Sorin, and then Mike, and then Corn, who's my character. None of the party members are girls. We're all guys, which is really funny. <laughs> Despite half of the players being girls, we all chose male characters. Uh, the others chose their own outfits, so they just gave me what they wanted their characters to wear. And I was like, yeah, I can just draw this for you. Despite like a good majority of us all being artists. I love drawing. Picking Korn's outfit was really tough, actually. It took me a while to draw. <laughs> it took me a while to figure out what I wanted. Let me just close off all these. Why do you take so long to close a file, CSP? Okay. Do I sell any sort of merch or products? I am opening up commissions again soon, but in terms of merch, no. 
I didn't do the suit, Corin. No, I did not. No breeze formal air. Oh shoot! I'll draw breeze soon. <laughs> okay, you have to give me a sh you have to give me an outfit for breeze though. Okay, fur and hair. This might be my last one. Depending on how long this one takes. Shading, line art, backgrounds, metal. Okay, fur and hair. What colors have I used? Green, red, blue. This is orange. Time to draw a tabaxi. Do it! Oh my gosh, Scribble's the best tabaxi. It's so great. He works for a he works for a, a news company that's called the Meowning News. Meowning News, and it's like a news station made of nothing but tabaxi. I love it. Where can I read my comics? Um, I have a webtoon that I haven't updated in a really long time. <laughs> Grayson is on webtoon. Say hello, Grayson. Fur and hair. It's a webtoon called Exclamation Point Grayson. Say hello, Grayson. It's right above you. Rip Grayson, he's dead now. He's not. I just haven't updated in a while. <laughs> Next time, just have to say hello, Grayson. Grayson will age 10 years. Throughout the entire... I have planned... I have up to, like, arc 3 planned. I have, like, everything for Grayson planned. He's supposed to get up to age 14. Depends on how much conditioner you use. Facts. Um, the hair holds a similar technique to metal. The more shiny it is, the less you need to blend. Right? Let's draw a really quick head really quick. We're starting with hair and then I'll do one for fur as well. Oh, it's transfer. No, it's not transfer. I don't want to transfer it, but like, okay, I guess that works in a way. It's gonna be 30, I'm tired. So we'll start off with a really shiny hair first. I'll do this in two ways. I'll do like a, a more cartooned way of shading it and then I'll blend it for y'all to show you how that works. So let's say I want to have like hair like this. Why can I not just merge with below? Okay. So let's say I had something like this. This hair is really, really shiny. Let's say if I wanted like some shadow in here, we'll, we'll do a cell shaded one first. All right, we can have a little bit of shadow on the bottom. And then you can add a nice, just kind of sharp highlight. To the top. 
kind of around where the light source would be coming from, right? That's a really, really nice... Anti-curve. All right, who's who started saying the anti-curve movement? Which one of you are one of my students? <laughs> That's an inside joke with my students. Which one of you have I taught before? <laughs> no, you're all good. I'm just seeing which one of you I know. <laughs> Show yourself. You can have cool inside jokes, too, if you join the classes! Exclamation point classes! How do I highlight hair? I just choose a lighter color that's slightly hue shifted. I have- here's my- here's my thing. <laughs> I have no consistent style for how I highlight my hair. So, like, this shape is one that I learned from another artist, is this kind of, like... Kind of like funky shape that goes like that. Sometimes I do like big blocky shapes like this. Sometimes I just do little lines like this if I'm trying to be quick. I have no consistency. But usually it's better if you just have small concentrated areas. Wish I had cool inside joke. Okay, we have even more inside joke. <laughs> oh, whoops. I could literally say, like, cool Steven Universe cosplay, and only you would know what that means. Just mean I'm a bad student? No, you're great. <laughs> I'm just being annoying. I'm in your class. Oh, well, then welcome in. Oh, wait, I recognize that profile picture. Welcome in. Glad you could make it. Have you thought of using a layer for your coloring, sketching, and tracing? Yeah. I usually do that. I'm trying not to right now, though. <laughs> cool Steven Universe cosplay. <laughs> yes, I welcome all of my students in here. Glad you could make it. Just got here from school. Vibes. I start back up in school in, uh, in September. So we'll be back to university. Better still be posting videos 10 years from now. I have no clue, man. Oh my god, 10 years from now I'll be in my 30s. I don't know if I'll be posting videos soon. <laughs> still. If I do, maybe it's not with Wing Canvas. Who knows? We'll see what happens. I don't want to think that far in the future right now. But let's say I blend it in, right? I still want to blend this in, but not as much, right? It's still shiny. You can still tell that it's shiny. And I'm blending it, but not so much to the point where that gradient is crazy, right? Just blending it in enough. 30 isn't so bad. No, but like, <laughs> you know... <laughs> 30 is not old at all. But I don't know if I'll be doing the exact same thing in 10 years, you know? Because for those who don't know, Wing Canvas is not just me. It's not just my channel. It's actually not my channel, period. I'm just a streamer. Um, Wing Canvas is owned by my lovely boss, Faye. And we have a whole team of artists here. It's not just me. I just so happen to be the one you guys see the most. Who's my favorite digital artist? I mean, I keep talking about her. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a favorite single digital artist. I think, like, she's my favorite digital painter, Nadia Kim. But, like... But, yeah, right? So, hair holds a similar technique to metal. The more shiny it is, the less you need to blend. For coarser, more see doopsie. Let's can I merge these two, please? Whoopsie doopsie. Can I not? <laughs> these layers are not organized. <laughs> Hang on. 
Why do I post the most? Like, why am I on here the most? It's just because I'm the sole streamer right now. We have more, we have more streamers coming up soon. It's not going to be me forever. So we're going to have more. Big fan of Ray Numawick. Ray Numawick's here? Hang on. Where? Can't tease me like this. <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> The Ray Numoic, where? I didn't see her. My favorite person. Can you name some artists I look to? Yeah, sure. Um, Stephen McGowan is another one, or Red Bean Violin online. Um, uh, Simon Stallenhag, I really loved. Um, you may, Y U U M E I, you may. I really love as well. Um, Haikala, H E I K A L A. I really love as well. Is it real? We've been over this. Cries. Okay. So let me draw in more coarse hair as well. Coarse hair, I tend to like use the same technique digitally and traditionally. Actually, you know what? Hang on. Because the technique that I use for curly hair is actually exactly the same as the one that I use for fur. Or it's very, very similar. Oops. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I'm just gonna pretend that that's fine. <laughs> okay. With fur, though, fur rendering, start dark, get lighter. You saw how I handled that bush earlier, right? Video on pose has really helped. I'm glad. We have not released a wa video on water, no. Where are these bots coming from? Good heavens. The bots are fierce today, goodness. So with fur, you want to start dark and then get lighter. We're going to do gray fur because I can. So let's say we started with a really, really dark kind of base, right? Start off with this nice and dark base. I'll do a painted, I'll do painted fur first and then I can talk about non-painted fur, but it's around the same. So we start over with this really dark base. We get a little bit lighter. So let's say that we start to get a little bit lighter, a little bit more detailed, start to bring out the shape of the fur a little bit more. Lovely Daria is always on the case. Everybody say thank you, Daria. Yes, everybody say thank you, Daria. Daria is also the one who designs the lovely thumbnails. She does the vast majority of them. And she gives me feedback on my videos. So... <laughs> Daria is our lovely one of our lovely one of our head designers and our lead mod.
<laughs> well, Daria, for making Jesse less brain numb. So true. <laughs> so true, actually. <laughs> oh, our interns are going to start making some thumbnails with some Sunday streams. Nice. Oh, nice. You're not hailing all of them. Good. That, that must be. That must feel better. <laughs> right. So you start nice and dark, and then slowly get lighter as you continue when you're rendering out fur. Lighter, more detailed. Pull out the details. The lighter that you go. Very similar to how I work with that bush. Right? They're yak headphones now with their cows, cow ears. Cow headphones. My actual headphones are the Logitech G73. G733s, if you want my actual headset. My cow ears are an extension. They're not actually. I turn on my camera, but I look kind of gross today, so I refuse. Um, but it's not it's not hard to find another video with my headphones on. Um But yeah, they're the my actual headphones are the Logitech G733s, but the ears are they were purchased off of Etsy. <laughs> Yes, this video will be available later. Looks like a burnt bush. It does kind of. But yeah, start dark, get lighter. Start dark and get lighter. And that'll give you some nice fur. If you want to do it like more cartoony, don't want to worry too much about it. Have your overall silhouette. I like to make the fur come out in points. Don't do this. That's not going to look great. Like this is slightly longer fur. If I was doing a bit fuzzier, I would have it shorter like this. Add little bits of detail. Right, don't need to worry about anything going too much. I've never seen your face, but I'm quite new. Yeah, you can just search on the channel. It's not hard to find my face. You have any strategies or tips not making the tufts or edges not to look too uniform or similar? Yeah, so usually I follow like somewhat of a pattern that tends to work. But as long as you just vary the size of them enough, it won't look too uniform. It's like, I usually kind of go like an up, then like this, then like down and down and then back up. That kind of tends to be how I do my my fur um, hair as well. Um, but if you vary the size enough, vary your lines enough, it's it's hard to tell. Also, have it follow the flow of like wind, follow the flow of like um, whatever is affecting it, so on and so forth. Oh, reminds you of Vanessa, Phineas and Ferb Vanessa. There's also a strat for when you actually draw fur on something. Like that's just a fur ball. But like, wait, let me let me check something really quick. Cause there's a specific thing that I need to look for. There's 10 minutes left, so I probably won't be able to do maybe one more tip, and then that's about it. Let's see here. When was the last time I drew full wolf socks? <laughs> Oh, actually, you know, I could just pull out Cliff again. We get to see Cliff again. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> All right. So when you actually draw fur on something, right? When it's a little bit less, um, a little bit less, like a little bit more short, 
like not like super fluffy. Usually what I do is just have like little lines like this rather than it being like super long like this. Usually if you just kind of vary the line work a little bit like this, it gives you a, a good enough impression that that's fuzzy. Hey Cliff, we all love to see Reindeer Dad. Whoopsie doopsie. That's right, this is a JPEG and this is on Flip Studio, so the layer is not locked. Okay, that's fine. But yeah, so usually it helps if you have like a little bit of just, just vary the line work a little bit and you'll, you'll get there. <laughs> Exclamation point Discord, if you don't know where the Discord is. We love Cliff. We too love Cliff. Yeah, no worries. We're gonna have a stream where we're rendering different objects in September 2nd. Is that a, is that a stream that I'm doing? Or is that somebody else? Ooh, no, that's not me. That is... Vanessa, I believe. It's either Vanessa. I think that's Vanessa. Yeah, that's Vanessa. A couple weeks from now. You're gonna get some new people later on. So it's not, you're not stuck with me anymore. <laughs> but Cliff, how big Cliff is all cool. The little one is just nervous. Yeah, Cliff is, Cliff is a character of mine who is like, he's very, he's six foot eight. He's a very large, intimidating man, but he is a teddy bear. In D&D terms, he is lawful good. I forget what kind of paladin he is. He's the- he's like a- I don't remember, but he's like- he's like the really lawful good one. That's all I remember. Don't leave us. <laughs> um, I'm not- I'm not leaving. I, I'm going on vacation for two weeks. Um, I, but I'll be back in- okay, so it'll be- the 19th and the 26th, nope, 19th, I'm still here. The 26th and the 2nd are not me, I'll be back on the 9th. Um, but then from that point on, we will also have Sunday streams that are not me. Um, we'll have Vanessa and Iggy taking over Sundays. I will still be here every Friday, though. Even more reasons to love Cliff, exactly. Taking a break from us, I'm taking a break from, this is my job. So it's, it's my vacation, I'm going on vacation. Um... Okay, I don't really have time to do any other big tips. Anybody have any small things that I can just talk about while I doodle a little bit for the end? <laughs> Going to Florida? No, no. Staying within Canada. She's tired of us. This is not the only thing I do here at Wayne Campus. Water holds the same principle as metal. So because it's super, super shiny, your rendering, you will have no soft shading with water. It will all just be hard shadows. Non-screen tablet users. Yes, non-screen tablet users. Um... A, practice. <laughs> B, um, usually a lot of really good exercises that I see people do is draw, like, try and draw perfect circles over and over. I'm drawing without looking at my screen right now. Just draw perfect circles, try and draw, like, faces. Right, I had a non-screen tablet before I had a screen tablet. rocks um i'm gonna be totally real with you i have no tips for rocks because i am not good at rocks <laughs> i have no tips that i'm comfortable with giving just because like i don't think i'm great with rocks so like i don't want to give you guys any misinformation fire fire is really nice fire is a really easy one um here i can just do this really quick i won't keep it on the page but if you draw just like a funky shape just like you like get yourself like a funky shape that kind of goes upwards take your eraser and just erase out specific sections like this almost to your liking lock that oopsie doopsie lock that layer choose a lighter color kind of go willy-nilly throughout 
get lighter as you go towards the center. Because the fire gets hotter as you reach the center. And you can just add a glow to it. Fire! Nice and easy. The only stuff I draw is rocks and cats and tabaxi. Valid. Um, I draw... Um, hot people. That's about it. <laughs> it seems simple. It's very simple. What kind of wrist or hand exercises do I do? Um, I don't know what they're called, but usually what I do is like I'll make a fist and I'll have my... Like if my fist is looking at me, I'll have my... Um, like I'll do it as if like I'm like like chopping something like like you know like the motion of like karate chopping but with just my wrist i'll do that in a fist i'll do that with a flat hand i'll take my fingers and pull them back towards my elbow that's another one i'll crack each one of my fingers individually i do wrist rotations that's another one what do you think is a better color selector triangle or square there's really no difference if you would like to use the triangle the triangle gives you a nice um, visual of that. I personally like the Hue Cube. I guess just because I'm used to it. Like a lot of people love color wheels as well. I'm cool with the color wheel too. But it's really, it really doesn't matter. It's up to whatever you prefer, what you're used to. How do you add a glow? A couple of ways. You can either have, if you have a glow effect on your program, you can use a glow effect. If you don't, um, you can create a layer, like copy the original layer, the color, move it underneath and then blur it. Um, like Gaussian blur it. That should do it for you. Can I draw a character without line art? We did that last week. Do I have a video on hands? Yes, we do. Can I download this page? Yes. Um, there will be this as a JPEG later on the Discord. Additive blending helps a lot for sure. Airbrushing also works. Like my cow ears. Thank you. Is there a method for making brushes or is it trial and error? It's a lot of trial and error. That's basically what it is. I told I talked about water briefly. Water basically holds the same principle as metal, where you just need to shade really, really hard. Um, if you want a really quick like water like you just create like a screen layer and put it over top of everything lower the opacity and you should have it or an overlay just like a blue if you want somebody underwater you can also have like the water texture water texture is really easy if you have like drawn a bunch of beans of different shapes beans and like circles change them change their size like this fill in the little cracks in between each one And then if you kind of just erase what you see fit. Erase the in-between areas more. This gives you water texture, like the surface water texture, really easily. This is a really easy way to do water as well. You can put that on top of people, or you can put it directly on the surface. That's a really easy one. You can just skew it. But okay, y'all. That is six o'clock. Thank you so much for joining, everybody. Um, oh my god. <laughs> this file is so long. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for joining for this two-hour period. Um... If you don't know too much about the studio, if you're new here, hey, welcome in. Welcome in. I'm glad you could join us. Um, if you would like to know more about the studio, know more about us, you could check out more classes that we offer, things that we offer on our website. We're not just a YouTube channel. We're an art studio, too. I offer I teach classes. There's other lovely instructors that also teach classes. Um, so if you'd like to check out all of those, you can go to wingcanvas.com. Check out the things that we offer over there. Um, this file 
you see in front of you with all the information on it will be available to download as a jpeg on our discord join our discord exclamation point discord exclamation point socials you can just find out anything that we have to offer over there um but if you'd like my working files we have we upload one working file per month over there on patreon uh wing canvas members our youtube channel members also get the one wing canvas or the one working file per month <laughs> so if you'd like my access to my working files you can join on patreon or um youtube memberships for those kind of perks all right like i mentioned though next week um will be my last stream for a couple of weeks oopsie doopsie um i will be going on vacation for a couple of weeks so next week will be the critique stream um if you've submitted your work i will be going through everybody's submissions um to seeing which ones i will be quote unquote roasting on stream going over them um, so we will be doing that on stream next week, and then it will be a break for me for a couple of weeks. You'll have Iggy and Vanessa, who will be hosting, um, two other lovely individuals, so you'll be getting their expertise instead of me, um, for a couple of weeks, and then I will be back the week after that on September 9th. Um, but yes, thank you so, so much for joy- oh, nope, there we go. Thank you so much for joining everyone, and I'll see y'all next week. Uh, au revoir, bye-bye.